Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Jason Lehman. I'm the marketing team lead here at Fishbowl Solutions, and I'm happy to introduce today's webinar called Build a Better Chatbot with the Oracle Digital Assistant Platform. Today's speaker is the president of the company, Tim Grudel. Welcome, Tim. Welcome, Jason. Thank you. Um, and thank you, everyone, for all the time today. Um, we've got about 45 minutes, and we want to cover really the highlights on um, what digital assistants are all about or chatbots are all about. Um, want to show some real life examples. And then we want to show you some of the key differentiators that have been enabled by Oracle's digital assistant platform. So the kind of the agenda, we'll just again cover a little bit about um, the, the value of, of a conversational design and a um, chatbot or digital assistant. Um, again, we'll dive into those demos and then really go a little deeper so you can actually see a little bit about Oracle platform. Hmm. Well, quickly, who's, who's Fishbowl Solutions? So um, we are currently Oracle's kind of leading partner in the digital assistant um, ecosystem. We've been doing it since 2017. Um, and our whole focus is on helping organizations kind of solve these, you know, streamline their organizations and solve kind of costly, frustrating problems through enabling technology. Um, we've been building and working on a lot of purpose built digital assistance um, for public sector, healthcare, you know, really any industry, and have a, lo have a lot of integrations with a lot of your enterprise um, applications, whether that be Service Cloud or ServiceNow, Zendesk or Salesforce, among many others. Um, one of the things that we'll be covering and we'll give you access to this um, presentation after are um, the, the various use cases for digital assistants and chatbots. Um, if you aren't talking about them currently within your company, I, I can guarantee someone in your organization is talking about them. Um, and most organizations we're working with, they're talking about them across multiple departments. Uh, common use cases that are in the market now are, you know, if you start at the top, you know, customer service and customer support bots, and I'll cover some of those, where that, with, whether that be FAQ type of questions on returning orders or PTO balances to, um, you know, getting pricing and availability. Um, Human resources and HR is also a very, very common area where you want to do everything from onboarding of employees to getting employees access to that critical information that is, is important for them, like PTO or holidays or manuals or resetting passwords to, um, um, you know, again, just policies and procedures. Sales enablement is another big area where, again, you're just trying to enable salespeople who are often on the go to get access to the important collateral or pricing information um, without having to have them call into like their customer service or their sales support rep. And um, again, marketing with all of the social media channels that are out there, um, interacting through the different social platforms is also a really critical, um, critical channel that people are really um, engaging with now, whether that be for, um, you know, again, municipalities or retail, et cetera. So um, we do have a demo server that, highlights a lot of these and I'll actually show you that because that's one of the things we found to be most effective anytime um, you're working with kind of a new disruptive technology. So um, again the, the key thing is really some of those use cases and why are they so popular and driving, um, how they're helping, seeing them in action and then you know cover the button. So why the, the common question we have with customers as we're interacting is like if, if they aren't already doing it, it's like, why are chatbots so important now? Or why are they making, making such a ripple in the market? Um, you know, I don't know the current numbers of the number of the number of Alexa or Amazon Echoes that are being sold or Google Homes being sold, but you can't go on weekend, you know, more than an hour or two and not see some kind of a new Google Home or Alexa ad. Um, and as is common that, that what starts in the consumer sector starts to move into the enterprise, and that's really where we are in that inflection point. Um, so it's, it's a really disruptive scenario that's happening in the market, and getting on board with it now is critical. Um, it is a key enterprise strategy as organizations are continuing to try to streamline how they interact with their employees and their customers. Um, the a conversational user experience 
is a key piece to do that, and one that also is, um, you know, cross-platform. So you have to be able to support the multiple channels. So, again, the common common theme when you're starting to talk about, you know, we already have a mobile app, you know, why do we need this new conversational interface? And mobile app for a lot of enterprises, whether it be retail or for employee use, have, um, you know, had significant value, but the app fatigue has really caused them to, um, to really wane as far as the usability. Key driver with the Oracle Digital Assistant and all conversational platforms is you now eliminate the need to download an app. Um, you don't have to go ahead and type in, you can actually make them conversational and, and voice enabled. Um, so you can access all your backend enterprise systems with the apps that your, your employees and your consumers are using, whether that be you know, Facebook Messenger or Microsoft Teams or Slack as an example. Um, I wanted to provide a little bit of overview on Oracle's platform before I jump into the demos so that the demonstrations make sense. So on the Oracle Digital Assistant platform, we kind of break it down into those kind of four key areas and there's, and there's more with every new release. So the first thing we'll be inter interacting with is the channel. So on the left, you'll see these channel configurators and what channels are in the concept of a digital assistant are the interfaces with which you interact with. That could be a messaging app like Facebook Messenger or Slack or Microsoft Teams or a website or even SMS. And you'll see demos of most of those interfaces. So that's one area of being able to configure and support multiple channels. The next key component in Oracle's platform is executing on the conversation or the dialogue. So there's a conversational engine in there that manages the states of these conversations, and that's a key component to um, handle the various interactions that happen during a, um, during a chat or conversational interaction. Um, another key component and differentiator of Oracle's platform is the AI and, and NLP and, and machine learning engine. So anytime you're starting to work with um, that conversational experience, you have a lot of um, a lot of complexities with converse, you know, sentences and, and wording of things, along with dialects if you're using the voice interaction. And you have to have a very powerful AI and machine learning and natural language processing engine to be able to handle that and to gain those insights. And then the last key focus area or component is the, um, a custom dial, uh, is a custom component capability. So with many of the applications you're working on, if you're looking to integrate with backend data, which in, the, in a corporation is common, but also um, in a retail example, if you want to check order status, you need to be able to access data from backend systems. And so having that um, custom component capability built in enables the interaction in the dialogue flows with those backend systems. So when I jump into the demos, you'll be aware of different, inter, um, different channels, and you'll see some of the flows and the execution through the process. This again hits on a little more of that the machine learning and how strong it is, you know, all the cognitive services that are involved in understanding the language and the intent detection. Um, you know, there's a lot of complexity in designing a conversation with entities and, and semantic graphing and um, just a ton of complexity. And then the other key component are the analytics and gaining insights in to the platform as you continue to use it. And, and the final key point um, about Oracle's platform that's unique from some of the others that we've worked with are, you know, these are the key areas. So they have a capability of having an instant app. Um, as you start to look and move down the conversational flow within your organization, there's many interactions where um, Go a, a back and forth um, conversation isn't as effective as um, including that and filling out a form. So, for example, if I want to update my marital status and, and pay status, instead of the, the digital assistant asking me back and forth to fill in that information, Oracle's enabled this instant app capability where you can actually just fill in 
you know, my new first name, last name, um, marital status, all that, all as part of your natural conversational flow. Um, another key capability is a Q&A engine. So many conversational experiences, in essence, aren't extremely conversational. It's more, uh, more of a knowledge for Q&A or FAQ interaction. And Oracle has a very robust Q&A um, service built in. Um, the next component is the conversational flow, which is the most common where you have that interaction about like ordering parts or getting updates where there's a multiple interaction conversation as part of it. So it supports that. And then the last area is an agent handover. A lot of the companies we're working with um, have been using live chat now um, for the last, you know, one to two years and their live chat has taken off. Um, what they're looking to do is to put a, a digital assistant in front of that to try to deflect a significant number, you know, 10, 20, 30% of those live agent interactions to an automated digital assistant for, you know, efficiency cost and, you know, additional support. But in the event from, from a, um, a customer experience standpoint that the digital assistant isn't handing it, that ability to hand over to an agent is critical and Oracle has that built in as well. Right. So with that, the thing that most people are interested in, let's go see some demos. So what I'm gonna show is I've got about four different demos here that will highlight many of the different channels that we talked about. And then at the end, I will go ahead and jump in and show you again, the Oracle platform and how some of them were built. So the first is, and this is a publicly facing chatbot. If you go to jsecoin.com, you can go ahead and you'll be prompted on the bottom for a little digital assistant. This is all running on Oracle's platform. So one of the channels is a web channel that you can put you know, anywhere. You just need some JavaScript and you can put it on any page. In this case, again, you can click on this and now this loads. So from within here, you can, you know, design your, your chatbot or digital assistant to go ahead and set up a number of different interactions on how you want to interact. Okay. So here you'll see it's, it's asking about, you know, in, it's welcoming you, um, giving you a little bit of information on it, and now it says ask me a question. So I'm going to say as a cryptocurrency court organization or entity, I'm going to say how do I invest? And from within that, it brings back the information. This is, as I mentioned before, more of a Q&A type of a bot where less interaction, more about giving people 24 seven access to their most common um, interfaces in, in a number of different channels and you could continue on with this flow. Another, so that was one example of a web channel interaction. I can also go and interact to this same bot through a Facebook Messenger interaction. So if I come here, I'm on the JS Facebook Messenger page, and I can do the same exact interaction here through a channel. So I can say, um, and this as a different channel now gives me, a, excuse me, gives me additional options to display some of those results. So as you're going down your chatbot, your digital assistant journey, you know, one of the key things to consider are the channels you're going to interact with and and what they're capable of from a displaying standpoint. So in Facebook Messenger, you can display cards and provide a little different experience than you can on the little web channel. So again, Oracle's platform supports, you know, multi-channel um, consumption and it handles the fact that on the first one, which was web, it didn't support cards, but Facebook does, so in, when possible, leverage the maximum capability of each channel, right? So that's one example 
of a couple of channels that you can use um, to do an FAQ bot. Another demo I want to cover and some other use cases are, this is another one of our demo servers. You'll notice a lot of these logos over here were the ones that you saw on the slide. Um, again, I can get you access to this. This is a publicly facing um, bot. So you can go to any of these bots and type in help. And again, this is a web channel talking to um, Oracle's platform. A conversational example here is around ordering a part. So I can go ahead and say I want to Now this is using Oracle's um, intent conversational state engine. So, or pick a part number, how many units would you like? I want 15 of those, um, which I want to ship it from Seattle to Fishbowl. And it now is, my chatbot is now so that conversational interaction prior to this would have taken me 15 minutes to call a customer service rep and get access to my backend EBS system. So there was a second example of a way you can leverage the platform to go do that. A third example in use case is around um, password reset. You know, many organizations have a problem with password reset because if you're locked out of your of your company's network, you can't then log into your ServiceNow or your um, Zendesk system to go do it. So some organizations we work with are working on having a um, a UI where they can the employee can log in and I can say I forgot I forgot my password. And now it asks me to enter my email. Now it's querying my backend system, you know, so it's going into, you know, whatever I have for authentication. Now it has some more security questions to say which of the ones is a former address. I'll pick one. And now I can say, do I want to have it sent to another email or to my SMS messaging, so it's doing that. And if you could see it, you would see the message coming across on my phone. And now I've got a code of five, four, eight, three, two, two. Okay. And now it's asking me to go to a place to reset my password, in which case this is using that instant app capability where now I can go ahead and I'm, I'm prompted to, um, you know, confirm my password. I can submit that and now that is completed. So um, that highlighted again, an ability to integrate with the backend system, um, both text messaging and the, the backend component um, and leverage the instant app to go ahead and drive the integration. A last example is on our face, another Facebook Messenger app where we're working on with a, it's for a city we're working with that has a municipality and they, they as an organization have a lot of people who are wondering who the representative is in the city they or the district they live in and like what's their garbage recycling so so from here on Facebook you can enable messaging so again within your Facebook page you can go enable messaging this is um, set up in, in developer mode so it's not publicly available so from within here I can now open this up and I can start to ask a question so if I start by saying who is my Who's my representative? First thing it does, I need to know my address. Okay. 
And now, again, to the backend integration capability, we took that address, we basically sent it to Google, you know, did some triangulation on it, compared it to the district zoning map, and now I can actually see who my um, representative is. Currently, this, you know, many cities, you know, have to have manual people sitting there to answer this, whether it be through an email or on a phone. Um, so was this helpful? You know, yes. If not, I have the ability to say no. And in this case, it's integrated with email. So now an email is sent to our office to go ahead and gather information saying, no, this wasn't helpful, but, but an email has been generated um, so that our, um, our service people in the office can go ahead and respond to it. So you've, again, enabled an integration with another channel. The next scenario here is around um, garbage, okay? I wanna say, okay? and you'll notice this is some of the, some of the language processing, it, it handles misspellings, it handles intents, and that's all part of that, the, the NLP engine. So if someone doesn't type it right, it's, it's got a very robust, to handle that. Okay. Now I'll go enter another address. On this case, just for time, I'll go grab this address. And so again, leverage that same integration to go ahead and Query the back end geo code and, and do the integration. What's helpful? No, I'm done. Right. So there was a couple of quick demos. What I'll jump into is a little bit about Oracle's platform. So you have an overview and then I'll actually jump into the platform so you can actually see it. The initial poll question Jason asked was about who's actually using the platform and who's actually on the latest one. Well, 18.4.3 is, or is Oracle's latest version, which came out about two weeks ago. And with it, they it added a tremendous amount of new functionality. Some of the key new features that were included in that um, were, were breaking up um, skills, so now when I go into the UI, you'll see there's a concept of a skill, which is really that uh, kind of a single intent bot. And then they have digital assistants, which are basically a higher level of assistant that, that can route between multiple skills. Right? Another key component that came up is the concept of entities or capability that was built in. Um, entities are very critical when you're doing things like um, the example is I'm looking for information on this customer. The customer would be the entity and you need to be able to um, have a capability in, the, in a digital assistant to be able to not have a list of you know, 20,000 customers stored in the body. You need to make, make that dynamic because that's the way um, conversational language works. Um, development. Um, there's now a capability to have multiple um, versioning. So there's versioning on your bots. So as you have a bot released, you then can go ahead and also have a new one in draft and you don't have to go ahead and keep duplicating. So it's a key capability to do that. Um, security is also a big capability. Features have added where you've got um, full three-legged OAuth. So again, as you're looking to integrate with other applications, and systems, the security and the um, and the and that permissioning is all critical. And then the last thing in the general box are um, you know some analytics and insights, and you'll see some of that, which are extremely powerful. Um, there's a new component for the web view, which is that you know that ability to put the little um, logo on your front page, and there's some new capabilities in that. Um, Twilio is a, an enhanced channel which is what, you, what we use a lot for both voice to text and then also SMS integrations. And there's gonna be some app initiated conversations. So when you have a lot of Oracle's SaaS platform, the um, 
um, the application can actually initiate chats. So huge number of features um, that we'll uh, really be able to, to, to dive into in, in light of time. I will just, I won't go through these here. I will just jump into the, the digital assistant UI. So what I want to do is use that last demo for, for this Jersey City bot. When you go log into the new Oracle Digital System platform, this is what the environment looks like. Okay, and, and for those of you who do not, aren't using it currently, Oracle's got a fantastic program where you can actually get anywhere from $300 to $500 in credits to go ahead and try it out. And that's how we start with many customers is, is the free trial where you get you know three to five hundred dollars in credits to go ahead and get the system working, and that is plenty of money to start out um, and get some development stuff. Okay. Under that, you have now you have skills, digital assistance, channels, and they've enabled the bot store. So because this is really just this has really been designed as a single skill bot, I'm not using the digital assistant. Okay. Within the interface, you have the ability to do both intents, which is what these are. So we have an intent on get representative, which is what you, um, I demonstrated, along with getting the trash and recycling. So those are the two intents that we talked through. A critical component in designing a digital assistant is the conversational design and the um, kind of the, the analytics on how you design. So for example, if I'm trying to get a representative, you know, these are called utterances, but it's a key area that we have been working on is the data science around how do you analyze what people are going to ask and how are they going to ask it and point that to the right um, intent for the job to be done. So, so the first thing is you create the utterances, you set the intents up, and then you build the integration. So within that, that's what we're doing. Um, you also have the ability in here to go, to go do these entities. So as we talked about, um, award is one of the entities, and this is the, one of the capabilities that they've added is to make that more dynamic. Right? So within within Jersey City, they have wards, and so we needed to have entities. So when you start to ask about what's my ward, we need to be able to query that. You then can. Um, you know, create some other capabilities where you have resources like multilingual, multilingual or localization is also a key component. Um, this one example that they're the most diverse county in, or city in the country, they say. So um, the ability, which we don't have enabled yet, to support multi languages is also critical. Um, as we mentioned before as well. Um, many organizations have more of a Q&A or FAQ type of an interaction. So this is that ability to have a Q&A built right in that you and your business can even maintain themselves simply by, um, you know, editing it through um, a UI. So I can come right in here and I can go ahead and keep editing. Oops. I can go ahead and enable the business to go edit the questions and the utterances to go ahead and support the system themselves. Um, you also have a, a, a tremendous amount of capabilities in being able to add more suggestions, have more history, um, you know, really get some analytics out of that. And what percentage of time when people type something, are they getting the right response? So insights, again, are critical as the new platform's getting deployed. This is one of the most significant areas of improvement in this latest release are the, the detail on the analytics and the, um, the visual nature of them. So on here, I'm looking at over the last seven days, I can go see the number of conversations, which channels are getting used, so how many came through a web channel or a tester channel versus a Facebook Messenger channel? You know, what percentage of these conversations are actually go to completion or how many don't? You know, what's that duration? 
um, and then on the error. So I, I really get some key insights into what's going on. I can also see what people are asking. So if people are asking things that we're not solving, I can go ahead and, and get insights into what I need to do um, better. Um, if I go across the top, I can go see that within that representative, um, that get representative intent, I can go see more details on that specifically. So which paths complete, how many times, some nice visuals on what happens. I can go look at, okay, this one didn't work, it was unresolved, so then I can go spend time researching that. Um, and you can do that by each of your, um, each of the intents. I also have an ability to go a lot more granular on the paths. So when I go look at it, I can go see how does it go, you know, I want to get representative, I want to get the ward, so you actually get, get that ability to get a really good visual on the conversation. When I'm, again, looking at the conversations as well, I can go ahead and, again, see what the intents are, what the outcome was. Um, I can actually view the conversation so I can see what actually happened. And, again, a lot of different abilities to go ahead and say, maybe I just want to see the ones that were incomplete and what was the conversation. Or let me go look, you know, again, a lot of capabilities on that. Or if I just wanted to see the errors, I could go see the errors. Um, another key component is when you're building and designing a bot, you have training it and retraining it is very is key. Um, you don't go ahead and just design a bot and then let it loose. You need to go ahead and train the bot because that's where the language processing and the AI starts to build up. So when you go in the process of designing a bot, you need to go ahead and, and have test data sets that you're actually training it with that you know um, lead to the right answers. Otherwise, the AI and the machine learning, you know, are starting at zero. So, so training and retraining is a key component in that. Oh. Um, you know, and another key, you know, so just a lot of new functionality with um, confidence thresholds. So as, again, as you're designing your bot, um, deciding what that confidence threshold is um, and what level of customer service you want are also very important. So again, as you're going through the training, you can start to um, toggle the thresholds and you can then go ahead and see the results as they come through based on um, the number of um, successful completions you get versus, you know, um, unresolved intent. Um, the digital assistant is where you can kind of work with the routings and set up the interaction models, you know, and some start, welcome, and help states. Um, the events, we don't have mapping set up on this one currently, but that, that ties into the having the multiple skills interact with the, um, the digital assistant. And there's a lot of capabilities on, on um, making the, the um, to, to drive the ML, you need to go ahead and have the, um, the wording right, you know, keep out words, um, and the escalation words to be a lot more effective. So there's just a tremendous amount of um, insight into what you can do. Um, the last thing I'll touch on um, before we go finish is the channels. So as I was, as I showed you, Oracle's got a tremendous capability to allow you to interact through multiple interfaces. Like you saw, you saw a web channel on the JSE coin webpage. You saw um, a couple of Facebook interactions through the Facebook channels. Um, and you also saw, not visually, but you saw the interaction with um, Messenger through Twilio. So within the, la the latest release, Oracle has enhanced the number of channels they support out of the box. And so now these are all out of, the, out of the box channels that you can interact with, whether it's Facebook, webhooks, web, 
you know, iOS, Android, Twilio, or WeChat. And more are coming on the on the horizon. Both Microsoft Teams is one, Slack is one. There's a number of others that are that are in process currently. So, um, I mentioned the agent integration, so you can actually integrate with the live chat handoff. So that's another capability you can handle there. Um, a lot of external application integration and system channels you can you can work with. So, so kind of in summary, what if I go back to the presentation, you know, in summary, every every organization is talking about digital assistance in some fashion. Um, it's applicable across all different departments and use cases, and many different interfaces and channels. Oracle's digital assistant platform is really the leader in the industry um, with all of the capabilities it has for the enterprise. And um, the roadmap for um, features and enhancements is, is um, growing quickly and getting deployed rapidly. Um, here's some additional resources that I'll keep on the screen as I bring Jason back in to go look at um, any questions. That's great. Thanks, Tim. And Tim, if you would, maybe just copy those links and just put them right in the chat so people can click on them from there. I think that'd be helpful. Okay. So yeah, so we do have some questions. And before I move to questions, I wanted to mention that Tim was giving the demo of that Jersey City example. We're really seeing a big uptick and a lot of interest in public sector and utilities around chatbots that he showed. You know, again, the channel is Facebook Messenger. And so on the utility side, we've heard, we've seen customers that, you know, they're just, they want a Facebook Messenger chatbot or digital assistant because they want their customers to be able to interact with that and tell them that there's a power outage or that they're looking to see how much energy they've used in a month or to see what their charges are for the month. So we've seen examples there. On the public sector side, we've seen examples where cities have deployed a chatbot or digital assistant because they want their community members to take action. So if you're driving down the, the road and you hit a pothole, um, they want people to be able to use the digital assistant or chatbot on their city website to basically report that there's a pothole on a certain street or to report violations or uh, report graffiti. So we're seeing a lot of different use cases across that, but again, with the power of the Oracle digital assistant platform, you can easily deploy you know, chatbots, digital assistants per those use cases. So as I mentioned, we do have some questions. So the first question is, can um, digital assistants talk to backend systems that are on-premise? Um, absolutely. Um, you know, obviously you need to make sure that your network is open, um, but um, the demo I did from a pricing and availability standpoint, that was actually talking to a system, a backend system. So very common example, and yes, it absolutely can support um, interactions with backend on-premise systems. Um, can you use Skype for business as a channel? Um, Microsoft is obviously, as I think everyone knows, they're, they're driving more towards um, Microsoft Teams as their, um, as their messaging platform. Um, Skype for business, I would have to, I'll, I will check with our technical team on if you can use Skype for business. I know we had done some work with it and I can't remember if it's uh, there. So I will get back to you on the response to that one. Um, another question is, do we have to retrain a bot that's in production or would it auto retrain? Once it's in production, you don't have to retrain it. It will keep learning on its own. It's when you make changes to the, um, to the model by adding new Q and A's or new intent that you then need to look at um, testing and retraining. Because you can, depending on how different each of those intents are, it can start to, um, you know, you have to be clear with your, um, the, the machine learning model. Um, we have another question on what is the cost of the digital assistant service per month? Um, the, the pricing on it is all based on an interaction. So, um, and you can and you can find all of this pricing on Oracle's. They have a cost calculator on the website. The cost per interaction, which is essentially round trip, is 0 0.0053 per interaction. And we'll put it in here. 
if you do or pay as you go. If you do a monthly or yearly commit, that price is discounted by 30%, so it goes to 0.35 per interaction. So, so for example, you know, I think I think the minimum threshold is a thousand dollars a month. So if you go to a thousand a month, you can get down to 0.035 per interaction. Okay. Um, next question is: What technologies do we need to learn in order to work on digital assistants? Um, the technology depends on your integrations, but you don't. You um, the, the biggest thing that needs to be done when you're doing it is they have. Um, what's called kind of their their bot ML. It's kind of a markup language or YAML that you need to use when you are um, building the dialogues. But the biggest effort in doing a chat bot or digital assistant is around the conversational design. And that's the biggest challenge most organizations have is they'll have a developer go ahead and start to put together you know, a, a simple request and they'll throw some utterances in there and they don't get great results because the way they, as a developer, um, thought about how to work it, um, you know, was different than an, an average user was actually querying it. So, um, so how do you make a call to an external REST API or custom components? Um, I can maybe just show that. Basically, um, in the um, in the backend inter interaction, there's um, there's a configuration that you basically develop, and you have an endpoint that you connect with. Uh, so there's basically a, an endpoint that you point to, like in these examples. Or if I go look at these, are some of the different interfaces that you would basically point to to um, do the backend interaction. Um, another question is, if we get the $500 credit, how long do we have? The digital assistant service. I think that's all available on Oracle's website. It might be, a, I think, when you can talk to your sales rep, I think by default it's a 30 day window to use it. Um, but I know the sales rep can, can oftentimes extend that for maybe another month. So you got one to two months to do it. And um, you should have all you need to, um, to get started. All right, great. Well, Tim. Great stuff. Thank you for all the information. Thank you for the demos. Uh, we are out of time. So I'd like to thank everyone for attending. Thanks for all the great questions. This webinar was recorded, so everyone that registered will be receiving a re uh, recording of the presentation and demos that Tim gave. We'll actually be parsing out the demos separate as well, so if you just want to watch the demos, we'll, ha we'll have that available as well. So with that, I'm going to sign off. Again, I'd like to thank, thank Tim. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Jason. And uh, check our website for more information about upcoming webinars on the Oracle Digital Assistant. Until then, I wish everyone a great day and happy holiday season. Thank you.